Jeremiah chapter 2 Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. That's not cry as in boo-hoo. That's to speak loud, if I may say. That's to be heard, if I may say, in my quiet voice. God wants the people to hear, if I may say. Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee. God has not remembered. Jeremiah is written to Jerusalem. It's written to Judah. He's talking to the Jews. The kindness of thy youth. The love of thy vessels. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness. Now you're going to get the history again of the Jews. And you're going to learn some things that wasn't written before. They searched God in the wilderness and sought him. Because God, we're going to learn that God was their only means. In a, land, in a land that was not sown. So that wilderness that they walked through was just barren. Nothing grew. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase. All that devoured him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them. Those are the nations that were against them. Saith the Lord. So the Israel God was a to, to God Israel was a joy. And those that hated Israel was no joy. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. And you can say this to America. And I will bring America into Jeremiah. What iniquities have your fathers found in me? John 8, 46. What sins have you found God to do? Where has God gone wrong? Oh, in America, look at all the children he killed. Look at all the people that are starving. Look at what God did with that storm that my insurance policy says the act of God. And yet, when a person gets saved and rescued from a bomb the doctors and those are people that helped them get all the credit and not God they get pictures of the person being wheeled out of the hospital room why not being wheeled into the church that they are gone far from me They've left God. America has left God. And have walked after vanity. Man, you want to talk about vanity? Look at America. Everyone's walking around with a cell phone. Everyone has something, has an electrical device somewhere in their hands or their belt or their pocket. Man, they step in the, wa in the water puddle, they'll be electrocuted. Vanity. You realize how much money Americans spend on entertainment? That To what purpose? What's it going to do for you one year, two years, three years from now? A guy hits a ball, and, you know, and boom, 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 so what? A guy drives around a, a circle track, so what? A guy puts an orange ball through a hoop, so what? We saw a bunch of actors on the screen, so what? What is that? Where is that going to get you with God in eternity? Nowhere. And our become vain, emptiness. Read this with the book of Ecclesiastes about vanity, vanity, saith the preacher. Neither say they, 
This is what they don't say. Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? They don't say in America, where is the Lord that brought the pilgrims to this land in the search of religious freedom, in the search of religious persecution that we came here to serve God? They don't say it. I gave today an invitation five minutes. Not one person came forth. Not one person asked the question. Not one person asked where God was. That led us through the wilderness. That's a, that's a place where he just said that Israel searched for God and sought God. What are the Jews being taught today about their history? Because it's a history all over again. Through a land of deserts. Is that why the rock followed them with water? And of pits. That's holes. and uh, Places if you were to fall in, you, you wouldn't be able to get out. I, I believe there's one place that says slime pits. Through a land of drought, no rain. How did they survive? God. And of shadow of death. They had to walk that desert for 40 years to all those that were in the age who didn't believe God. Died. Through a land that no man passed through. There was places where no man walked. But the Jews walked. And where no man dwelt. There was no homes, no tents, no dwelling place. That's how bad the, the uh, that's how bad the wilderness was. That's why God had the rock follow them with water. That's why they had the manna. Or they would have died from malnutrition, from no food, no water. And I wonder how many of them bowed their head and asked God to thank for the manna and for the water. If you couldn't see the water and the manna being super, uh, I'm trying to think. being superb and supernatural, and they thanking God for it. You know how bad this place was? No man walked through it. This was not on their maps. You go through there, and if you ain't got enough supplies, you and your, your, your caravan going to die. This is a place where men did not dwell. You know where men dwell? Where there's water. If there's no water, men don't dwell there. You know, they were cut off the river. Uh, I don't know what the name of the river is, but over there in Nevada, you cut off that water source, and Nevada would be a, a gone city. I don't care how many millions of dollars are there in, in the casino. You cut off that water, and that city will die just like that. By the way, they're getting massive droughts out there right now. And I, God, brought you into a plentiful country. Israel. In the land that flows with milk and honey. God brought them in, not Joshua. To eat the fruit thereof. And the goodness thereof. You know, they didn't have to plant. When God brought them in that land, it was harvest time. And the day that they entered that land, the manna stopped. And you ever ask yourself a question? Do you ask yourself questions when you read the Bible? Where did the rock stop? Did the rock cross the Jordan with them? Where did the rock go? What happened to the rock that gave them water? 
that Moses smoked twice and he didn't get to go in the promised land. What happened to that rock? Did a rock get to go in the promised land? Thereof in the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land. Take that to the United Nuts. Take that to the Arabians. Take that to the Catholics. Take that to the Jordanians. Take that to the PLO. Take that to the newspapers. That land of Israel that God gave them said is my land. This land is my land. Only America would steal that. You know, in all actuality, the land of America is God's. Genesis 1, God made it. And you stole it from the Native Americans. And made my heritage an abomination. And the priests said not. They did not say, where is the Lord? These are the ones that are supposed to be instruction of God, Jehovah, and the law. And they didn't, where's, where's God? That capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the Jehovah. They didn't care where he was. And they that handled the law knew me not. If that's not a description of what the, what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes were in Jesus' time, I don't know what would be. You know, they added more to the law and put more of a burden on the people and they didn't even recognize Jesus Christ or give him the credit of who he was. If they really knew the law, and they had to, they had to hire false witnesses against Jesus because they knew he obeyed the law 100%. Jesus turned around and said, "Well, if I can't do this on the Sabbath day, why do you rescue? Why do you rescue your sheep when it falls in a hole? If if I can't do this on the Sabbath day, why do you go feed your cattle?" And let me ask you a question: What did Jesus really do on the Sabbath day that would raise such an uproar? All he did was speak. He didn't break out no doctor kit. He told a man one time, stretch out your arm, and that got them. Is that really so in the law? Find me in the law where it says a man can't stretch out his arm. You know what when Jesus said, cast your burdens upon me, and I can't quote that verse completely. You know what he was talking about? He was talking about the burdens that the Pharisees and Sadducees were putting on the people. Unless you wash your hands. And, you know, he said, you guys strain at a, a, a gnat and scan it on a, a camel. You got these, per, these people under great burdens that you don't even bear. Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed, transgressed against me. Hey, there's America. There are pastors and pulpits are not doing what the word tells them to do. They're doing what Satan tells them to do. They're doing what the world tells them to do. Of all the churches that my wife and my family is going into, how many have coffee and tea rooms? Chandeliers in the bathroom. Perverted Bibles. Magic shows. Face painting. Prize for the kitties. A keg party. Come as you are. Halloween costume night. Well, that wasn't Halloween. See, it wasn't on Halloween. Uh, uh. There was one that was a bingo, but it was, it was changed. Uh, trunk or tree. Christmas trees. 
Well, you can't have bumper stickers on your car. That, that, that's bad. You can't go on the street. You can't say hell. Say this prayer and you're saved. Oh, you were already baptized a couple years ago? Well, we'll just baptize you again. Listen, this is stuff I have witnessed in churches from Connecticut down to Florida. There have been a couple of churches that we walked in and said, didn't even spend a, a minute. Goodbye. One church, we used the bathroom and we ran right out. Quite surprised at what this guy has brought his church. There's a couple of churches I've been completely embarrassed. I've got friends in. I would be completely embarrassed to walk in that church today to say goodbye to my friends that I'm leaving Connecticut. There was a church that got it right up in the paper because they had nice comfortable chairs and a nice hockey kind of t table or pool table or something. And when I rebuked that preacher in, in the newspaper, boy, he got after me. And I said, well, do you go out and witness the people? No, we just invite them to our little sit-in and enjoy the pinball table. There's a church right down here on Friday nights. It's a church. And you see them, there's an open, when the doors are open, there's a pool table in there. There's all kinds of blasphemy music and people standing around the door smoking cigarettes all Friday night. And then there are pastors that get up that don't preach Jesus Christ. I ain't going to finish this chapter tonight. There are pastors who get up there and say, Well, I prepared a place for you. And truly, truly, instead of verily, verily. There are pastors that transgress me. They've got more money than God's got. They've got a mansion, all right, but it's located in, in the city or in, the, in a suburb somewhere with their, their, their helicopters and their airplanes. They transgress against me. They are leading the people astray. There are pastors and churches where Satan sits in the front row and amens the preacher while Jesus is standing at the door waiting for someone to come out of the church. Now I can keep on going. And the prophets prophesied of Baal. The prophets are teaching the false gods. You want a joke? You want a hallelujah joke? I'll tell you a joke. I saw on a Catholic sign today, it said, Prayer and Bible Study Tuesday nights. And that's a joke. They're prophesying of their, it's not a Bible, it's a missile. I grew up Roman Catholic. Of Baal. Their worship is of Baal. Check the Bible out and check them out. And they prophesize anything but what the Bible prophesies. They'll prophesy, well, you know, if you're good and you give us enough cash and money, check or money order kind of thing, you know, we'll send you to a place that you can spend a certain amount of time there. Then we'll let you out. Then, you know, Peter will let you into the front door. Well, if that guy preaches hell on the street, oh, you know, they, they prophesy, well, Mary, you know, she's the mother of God and, you know, all women, they're just so lovable and kind and great like that. They'll just have to understand men are just so wicked. And they get up and prophesy, well, God loves sodomites too. Have you read what the Bible is and what Baal worship was? How the Sodomites are, are, are with the Baalites. They have vestures. They have incense. They have prophets. And they have a woman dedicated to them that painted her face. And walked after things that do not profit. Eternal profit. There are going to be many, many, many people. Who are going to stand at the great white throne judgment. And Jesus is going to say, I 
never knew you. But Lord, I was one of your Jehovah Witnesses. I never knew you. But Lord, I, I, I ate you every Sunday morning. I never knew you. But Lord, look at all the spiritual babies that came down from Jupiter with all my many wives I had. I never knew you. But Lord, I was in a Baptist church. I never knew you. But Lord, I was a brighter. I never knew you. The only thing that will profit you is the Lord Jesus Christ in obeying the Lord Jehovah, what he says to do. None of the nonsense. Wherefore I will wherefore I will yet plead with you. See, God hasn't given up. God ain't done with you until you're dead. You're not done until you're dead. Problem is, you don't know when you're going to die. God does. You know how long-suffering God is? Look how long Israel sinned against him, and yet he still hasn't forgotten them. Uh, wait, what did it say? It said, verse 2, I remember thee. They're not walk they are not walking in the way of Jehovah since they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. Now you take that, if that was 33 AD, you take 2015, whatever that is, you subtract it. That's how many years they've been against him. And all the apostles of the land outside of Judas, they killed outside of John, but they, they boiled him in oil. They persecuted Paul. They used the Roman government to do it, but they were the authors of it, just like they gave Jesus to the Roman government. But God says, I, I, I'm still pleading with you. He's still, listen, Jewish people are still getting saved. Amen. Glory to God. That pleases God. A Jewish person that will come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior is more pleasing than a Gentile. Because that's his chosen people. That's someone above, above somebody. He's not only believed on the Messiah, but he's believed on the Savior. saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. How can you say God's done with Israel? That's another false teaching of pastors and priests. That God's all finished with Israel and now is the Gentile. That's a false doctrine teaching. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send unto Kedar and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Has a nation changed their gods? Well, the answer would be no. But God, uh, but, the, uh, but America has. We used to be one nation under God, but now you take a look at the phone book and see what, what God is that. Which are yet no gods. All the small G-O-D-S's are no gods according to God. But my people, the Jews, have changed their glory. God, what is God? God is glory. For that which does not profit. There's another prophet. There's no prophet. If you serve small G-O-D-S, you're not going to get no eternal rewards. You'll get the lake of fire. He said, you know what? The Gentiles don't change their gods, but my people have. But then again, I changed my gods. On April 21st, 1987, I traded my gods in for the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because God told that Jew, he said, listen. You don't want me? Well, I'll tell you what. I will turn to those dead dogs. I will turn to the Gentiles. And to anger you, I'll let them in. And I got in in April 1987. The nation is pretty much an unsaved nation. You know, nations today are changing over to, to Islam. 
by force or die. Be astonished, O ye heavens. God says, look at the heavens. Heavens, look. Look at what those Jews have done and at this. And be horribly afraid. He's talking to the heavens. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. You imagine what these people have done. I made you, Saturn. I made you, solar systems. I made you, moons. I made you, planets. Now look at my people. You know why he says be very desolate? If Adam and Eve would have never sinned, how long would it have been to this planet would be completely people? Where people would be standing on top of people, standing on top of people. God would have to have somewhere to put the people. Well, what do you think he made the other planets and all that for? And you wouldn't need spaceships. In fact, is there's going to be people in, in eternity. We have a new heavens and new earth. For my people, the Jews, have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. The fountain of living waters, Proverbs 5.15. John 4.14. 4, when Jesus speaks to that woman at the... Oh, oh, what was she? What was she? Wasn't she a half-breed? She was half-Jewish and half-Gentile. Speaking about the water, the living water. I am the living water. And he says here, that you have forsaken. How do you know they've forsaken the living water? Because they crucified him. They put him on a cross. And watch this, number two. And had hewed out them oh, had hewed them out cisterns, which hold water, broken cisterns that can hold no water. It has no purpose. They made themselves little pots to hold their gods, and their pots, their places can't hold because they got holes and they're broken. So it leaks out. They got a leaky God. So what's one of the things that you see in most churches? You see some kind of baptismal. And they'll put their people in there for salvation. And you know what? God says, that's not the living water. That's not how you get saved. It's broken. You look at, well, it don't look broken to me. The way of salvation, it's broken. It don't work. Is Israel servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled by the nation? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. God sent the lions in there. <laughs> Go get them. I have a little problem with, with the animals in America now. You got people going on YouTube and going on Facebook showing videos of bears swimming in their swimming pool. Rabies keeps coming an epidemic every summer, worse and worse. We just read I just read the other day about people who keep squirrels. There's a disease with the squirrels. We got the bird flu, you know, give them a tissue, and eggs are going through the, through the sky. Cities are burnt, and they're not in Babylon yet. Also the children Nah and Tafhini have broken the crown of thy head. So here are people come in and attack. They spoiled. Verse 14. God has sent little judgments in before the big judgment, trying to get them right. These these nations coming in and, and burning them and, and killing them 
is a spanking on the hind. He's like, will you wake up and get right? But you know what the Bible records? In any battles that they won, it says in the Old Testament, they would gather their gods and take them home and worship them. One of the kings of Israel in Judah went to this nation, saw this great altar, sent the priest to go get the, the figures and the measurements and build it and put it in the temple and take the Lord's brazen altar down that I may worship on this great altar. Reuben, the half tribe of Manasseh and the other one there, not maybe not Reuben, Gad, the ones that did not go into the promised land, built a great altar for all to see and a testimony that you know we are Israelites too well cross the river and you'll be truly Israelites and you know how much room there was for them Judah had to soak in Benjamin and Simeon and Simeon just became soaked in the land there was enough room Hast thou not procured that's to obtain this unto thyself and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? I think I read that the, that the pilgrims were supposed to land somewhere else. I read the story of the Mayflower and all the things that happened to that ship. That wasn't supposed to be the ship they were supposed to be on. God sent them this way, which brought them into Royal Island, the first Baptist church, and right around the corner from that, the first Jewish synagogue. And no, I'm not talking about Roger Williams. I'll let you search that out yourself. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And now, what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor. What hast thou to do in the ways of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. These are foreign rivers. Foreign water sources. And they may even have to pay for it. According to Lamentations. They forsake the living waters of their own homeland given by God for foreign water. And any water they broke, brought back was broken cisterns. It didn't know, they had to go back and get more. But what did Jesus tell that woman at the well? She said, you don't even have a pail to get the water. He said, I don't need no pail. I am the living water. Ah, Jeremiah chapter 2. Thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy black backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee. Oh, that's America. You know what's a bumper sticker a few years ago? No fear, idiot. They are not fearing God, so they are not serving God. America is not fearing God, so she is not serving God. Saith the Lord God of hosts. It's amazing that these people are trying to fight the government with taxes, and, and oh, they don't want to have rules and regulations against us doing this, and, that, and they don't do nothing for the Lord. Somebody like me and people I know who go knocking on doors and have public ministries, we'd be the ones that'd be affected. Your tax revolts is because you want more money in your wallet to pay for the stuff you want. Like you're really going to give it to God more. For of old time, I have broken thy yoke, is what Jesus said, and burst thy bands under Egypt. And thou sayest, I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and every and under every green tree thou would wanderest, they have transgressed. 
and playing the harlot with other gods. Sleeping with the enemy, Satan. And playing the harlot, the harlot is the one that gets the money. They're getting money by serving Satan. What money has America got by serving other gods? The god of oil. The god of Chinese import. Yet, yeah, I had planted thee a noble vine. And this is spoken of so often in the scriptures as that vine. Spoken of in Isaiah. Spoken of by the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy, a right seed. There's nothing wrong with them. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Isaiah 121 and chapter 5 verse 4, Deuteronomy 32, 32. Israel was a right seed. They were the right grapes, but they turned into sour grapes. And Jesus speaks about us being grafted in that vine. Jesus said, I'm the vine. Something happened to the fruit. For thou, that for though thou wash thee with mitre, the kind of soap, strong soap, and take thee much soap, strong soap and soap, I'm going to wash myself. Yet thy iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. Isaiah 118. Your sins mark you. Then you can't clean yourself. Job 14, 17. Though I wash me with snow water. Though my, my, my flesh will adore me. My own flesh hates me. How canst thou say I am not polluted? That's what America's saying. We're the ones that they, they say are wrong. They're the ones trying to shut us up, but we're trying to help them. I have not gone after Baal. That's Baal, plural. That's the worship of not only the sun, Baal, and Asterisk, the moon, but all the little planets and all the little stars that Baal and Asterisk make together. Mommy and Daddy. So they're worshiping the planets. They're worshiping the universe. They open their New Jerusalem daily and they look for the horoscope in the comics page. To see what they can do that day. And what not to do. And how to find their love. Because, you know, Pisces can't match with Sagittarius, whatever the other junk is. See the way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. So that the valley has to do with something bailing. Thou art a swift dromedary. And that's a quick quick camel traversing her way call him a camel a wild ass you know what he just called him like that, that that gentile woman you know what he called her used yeah used to do in the wilderness that snuffeth up at the wind at her pleasure he picks up her nose in her occasion, who can turn her away? Oh, Nash is stubborn. All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou says, There is no hope, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. I'm not going to turn to God. I'm going to take off my shoes and I'm going to settle down. I believe the night of Passover, Moses told them, put your shoes on your feet and be ready to go. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. That's how they're going to be found 
at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. They're going to be ashamed because it was you. Well, I'll be darned. All those Christians were right. You know those people that sit at that, that, that uh, farmer's market week after week after week and they will not turn to Jesus Christ? You know what they're going to say one day? Well, I'll be darned. That loud mouth was right. I needed to be saved. The salvation was through Jesus Christ. I ought to have done it at that point. I, I don't know if tomorrow is going to come. Now I'm standing before God, and guess what? I am ashamed. And you can't do nothing about it. One day they'll be ashamed of telling us to shut up and try and discourage us. Imagine a Christian who tries to discourage a Christian from working and doing what God has told him to do. Imagine being ashamed before the judgment seat of Christ. Then try to expect getting a crown or something or even a city. Imagine being ashamed walk around for all eternity no crown. Imagine being in the millennium and you have no city. Well, which city do you have? I have none. Why? You see that one over there, city over there? Yeah. Well, I try to discourage them. Why? Well, I love the world. I wanted the world to love me. And I knew he was right. And if he continued, you know, the world... The world hated him. I don't, I don't want the world to hate me. And he was making me look bad. As a thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets. The rulership of the nation and the religion of the nation. Imagine all them that walked and talked with Jesus saying to the stock and that's a piece of wood thou art my father you know what America says mother earth the big bang and to the stone tell us what the weather is going to be you know the weather rock we used to have when we grew up as children we used to have a pet rock Sold in toy stores. Thou hast brought me forth. A rock and a piece of wood. The rock, paper, scissors. Oh, wow, look at that. Be careful what you do. For they have turned their back unto me, God speaking, and not their face. They can't face God. They're ashamed. But in... The time of their trouble, what trouble do you think that is? Jacob's trouble. In a time when Nebuchadnezzar comes, in a time when they're dealing with death, they will say, Arise and save us. And God will say, But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Oh, I never knew you. Where's your gods? Where's Baal? Wouldn't it be funny if God threw Baal into hell first at the judgment seat of, at the great white judgment? And he said, well, where's your God that made you? Down there in hell. <laughs> Very good, isn't he? You like to join him? No, 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 no. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Go to hell. But Lord, didn't I? I never knew you. I never knew you. How can your God save you if he's in hell? Well, what God did you have? I had the pole. Where is he? Down there in hell. Oh, really? He's going to do you a lot of good, isn't he? Go jump in the lake, my friend. Let them arise. Now, this is where Elijah had a fun time with the prophets of Baal. 
Come on, he's on the phone. He's on the journey. Maybe he's sleeping. Come on, cry aloud. Hello, Mr. Bell. Where are you? Where's the fire? You know what's so funny about that? Bell was the sun god. Where is the fire that came down? You know what the sun is, don't you? Pure fire. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble, and they won't, Muhammad is going to be cursing Allah as God Jehovah cast us off into the lake of fire for all eternity. Roman Catholics will be cursing their Pope at the, at the great white throne judgment as God will cast them in the lake of fire with their Pope. Joseph Smith will not be liked as his followers are cast into the lake of fire. Joe Smith and Brigham Young won't be able to take care of you, my friend. Now watch this, America. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. I got chapter 11, verse 13. And in America, what do you see in every city? How many churches can you find? In every major city, you've got small g, o, d, s, and even in small little towns. But you've got very few Bible-believing churches who are King James and the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ based upon the gospel that Christ died for sins, was buried, arose again the third day that you need to put your faith and belief in the shed blood of Jesus Christ who is God and God is Jesus Christ but in cities and in towns of America you have gods. We are following the root of Judah and do you know what happened to God's people? Twice they were destroyed. Now, if God did that to his bride, the bride of God is, is the Jews. If God did that to his people, you think that God is going to spare all of America? You think God will have the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem, and America? You're a fool. You are a fool. You can remove, you can take my gun off my dead fingers. God will. Because there are no guns in New Jerusalem. Matter of fact, he had a he had a whole army cast into hell and they took their spears with them and their weapons, the Bible says. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Look at that. God said, what are you talking to me for? You got your gods. Worship them. Some of you worship your mother and your father. Don't come to me. Some people worship their children. Don't come to me. Let them take care of you. Some people worship their career. Let your career take care of you. Money, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. That's a god. All that money you poured into those companies, they will not be able to save you before God. I know people who have, for a company, they were a company man, and even before the judgments were set, before their, even their great retirement, they lost it all because the company sold out to somebody else. Lost hope. Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. God punished them. They received no correction. Your own sword has devoured your prophets. 
You killed your own prophets, and Jesus backs that up. You find that in, in Kings. You find that written in the prophets. They tried to kill Jeremiah. You murdered your own prophets. And devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. That's what Satan's like to do. You became Satan by destroying God's people. Ooh, I wouldn't want to be likened to Satan. Old generation, see ye the word of the Lord. See the word of the Lord, not hear it. That means it's written down. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel? No, because he already described the wilderness. A land of darkness? No, God is light. And there's no darkness in him. Wherefore say my people, we are Lord. We will come no more unto thee. Ooh, let his blood be upon us and our children. Can a maid forget her ornaments? Isaiah 49, 15. Or a bride her attire. Imagine a bride walking up before her groom and she's butt naked. Well, that could be America. You got to be careful there. But usually a bride and a maid, they won't forget their, their jewels and their clothing. Only in America would you forget your clothing. I just read the other day in California, they're going to start having naked billboards. Yet my people have forgotten my, me days without number. God doesn't even, listen to God, the, the whole book of numbers. Add up all those numbers that God recorded. And he said, you know what, days without number. I, I lost count. God losing count? You know what God's saying there? I don't even count it. One day without God is one day too many, my friends. You forget God to read your Bible one day. That's one day too many, my friends. You don't pray to God one day. That's one day too many, my friends. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Love of who? The nations, the gods, not God. We got a plaque from the city on our church wall because they just like us so much. Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Not only did they adhere to the fallen gods, but they taught people. Jesus said, you go through, you pass through sea and land, and you find one person, you make him a worse child of hell. Don't you see Jeremiah chapter 3? I mean, Jeremiah chapter 2, and Jesus speaking? Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Murder. Matthew 23, 15. I have not found it by secret search. Oh, God didn't look, look at the course. He didn't look at the byway. He saw the murders plain and open. They killed Jesus on a hill before all. It was not done in secret. But upon all these, yet thou sayest, because I am innocent. Oh, boy. Surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. There's a religion that says, oh, I'm not a sinner. You are a sinner, for all have sinned. They're saying, for all this, we've done nothing wrong. Why gaddest, and that's to go back and forth, thou about so much to change thy way. Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou was ashamed of Assyria. They keep running back to Egypt, and God said, don't do it. They run to Assyria for help, not God. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him, and thy hands upon thy head. For the Lord has rejected thy confidences, Egypt and Assyria. And thou shalt not prosper in them, Egypt and Assyria. This nation is just gone away from God. And God says at that point of judgment, go, go to your gods. And by the way, the people you trusted in, you made an ambassador, you went seek for help, Egypt and Assyria, they're going to do you no good. They're going to do you harm. And not good. 
And I'm going to do all this punishment. So the fact is that you will come back to me. Boy, you don't want God to whip your behind. He'll whip your behind very good. Very red. When you are his children. 